Hello, welcome to the Philadelphia Museum of Art Craft Show Artist Talk with emerging artist, artist Tamara Belinda of Crown Inspired. I'm so thrilled to be chatting with you today, Tamara, about your beautiful handcrafted parasols and look at how much you have going on there. So let's dive right in and talk about what you're working on right now. Yeah, um, right now I am finishing up these parasols. I put um, fabric on uh, paper on bamboo and I'm currently just finishing up the tops to make it one cohesive print. Well, that's beautiful. So what, um, and what about the construction on the inside and how you build it out? I mean, so you're saying bamboo and then what's the fabric that you're putting on top? Uh, so the fabric on top is cotton. It is a wax print. Um, I right now use um, African wax prints because um, they are part of my heritage, not directly, but um, it is part of where I got to be. Um, so it is in me, um, but the interiors, however, I, uh, I thread, let me get a little closer. I thread the interiors with a wax thread and then a um, polyester thread, um, just to maintain the shape and, uh, give it the proper structure. That's that fabulous. <laughs> I mean, that, and that's, I mean, and that's such detailed work. And then you're clearly putting in mechanisms to be able to open and close as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have been on this notion that art has to have a function. <laughs> that's just me. Um, I, I think that emotional art is cool, but it's extremely personal to the artist. And then if that, if another person resonates with that emotion, then there you have that connection. But art that has a function is kind of meant for any and everybody. And so I work with functionality. I love it. So let's let's talk about functionality. I mean, so these are really meant for the sun. Um, how are people using them? And what, you know, what made you decide parasols? <laughs> um, yes, these are for the sun. However, I do make uh, versions that are that can be used in the rain, not heavy rain. Um, not yet, because um, that um, heavier rain needs a stronger structure, and I'm still waiting to get all of that together. Um, but there are versions that I do, particularly my paintings. Um, these are waterproofed um, so that they can get wet, even though people don't really want to do that. <laughs> um, I, they, to be honest, this completely came about because I needed it. <laughs> um, I had just come back from uh, traveling for over a year and I started being an artist, being an artist. Um, I would, uh, I came back to New York and um, I was initially selling t-shirts with my icon on it, this, this icon on it. And, um, and a bunch of other designs and it was really hot one day. And because of my travels, especially since I was in Asia, um, I had a parasol and I brought that with me um, on that particularly hot day. And then one day I'm looking up and I'm just like, what would happen if I put fabric on this? <laughs> and um, that kind of is uh, how my brain thinks. I just ask questions and uh, I'm inspired to ask the questions and then to find the answers. So um, I've gone, th this is a major journey of finding answers. Um, right now, particularly personal um, uh, answers of myself and realizing that these questions that I've been asking myself are questions that a lot of people ask themselves. Um, and so it's just, been a journey of say, oh yeah, let's think about that. <laughs> so you mentioned, um, you know, you're painting on some of these as well. Yes. Right. So, so it's a talk about, so you have some that are like fabrics, like you're finding these beautiful patterns. Yes. Um, where, where are you finding them? And then what are the, what talk about some of the paintings that you're doing and how you're deciding what, what you paint on and what you're doing with that. Okay. Um, 
the prints that I get, um, I'm, I'm privileged in, in living in New York to um, have a very diverse and abundant African community re really close by. So I go to um, people who come from Africa, bring their things um, and I get it from them. So I get authentic fabrics or as authentic as possible. Um, I've had to learn a lot about the difference in African um, fabrics, um, what different things mean, and then the production. Um, because uh, in with the, some prints that are in Africa and a lot of prints that people understand as African, um, prints aren't exactly authentic. They aren't printed in Africa. Um, they're, they can be printed in China or in India, and I do my best to get very authentic things. Um, and I do that because the printing industry in Africa is extremely small, um, and people don't know that. Um, there are only about five uh, textile print companies in Africa, um, in the entire continent. Wow. Um, and... I am, uh, I think like three out of those five aren't even uh, owned by Africa. I think they're owned by um, companies in the Netherlands. Um, and that's okay because uh, African textiles, uh, African Ankara is actually, uh, excuse me, wax print is actually something that came from the Netherlands via um, Indonesia. So they brought um, Indonesian technique with the wax print, the Dutch, over to Africa and Africa has just inherited all of these um, textiles and the culture and the, uh, and the colors and the beauty of it. Um, so I choose based, uh, honestly, I choose based on feeling. <laughs> if I like the prints, then, uh, then uh, <laughs> they are, they work for me. Um, and uh, with prints that are more African known, um, so like the Kente things, um, so this is, this is the patchwork. Um, I will, again, choose based off of what I know, try to find the un understanding and history of the print so that I can also educate people through my education. Um, so, this is a mixture of textiles. Um, this piece here, this symbol here, um, this is the Kente symbol, that, which means military strength. Um, this, these, this line work here, this means courage, and this line work here, well, this, better, this line work here, this means bravery. So um, there are a lot of uh, cultural meanings to particularly Kente cloth. Um, and then I have a number of other prints. So that print up there, the flowers, um, it's called the Fleur de Mariage, um, also known as the Rolls Royce. It, this is actually a Dutch print. Um, this is the rendition of that Dutch print. Um, yes, and yes. the interesting part about these Dutch prints, these, some, some of these prints is that they're, um, named by, um, they're the customers. They're named by Africans um, versus the company. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if if it, if I vibe with it, then <laughs> then I select it and I work with it. And so I'm looking, you know, so you have the, the seeing the raw fabric, and is it one piece that you're putting on, or are you cutting out multiple pieces and sewing it onto the bamboo, or? Well, this, this particular one, this is the patchwork. So this, this one was sewn before it was placed. Um, but the other prints, that is all one piece. And it took me about eight months to figure out how to place one piece of fabric. <laughs> Initially, I was cutting it and, um, and folding it out so there was some overlap. Um, but I decided that I didn't like that anymore. So I had to figure mm -hmm. out how to actually flatten it out and, and place it. Uh, um, so um, I also talk about uh, my thing. So because that that's another that's another story. Um, I this for me is math, 
and I have been a lover of spirographs since I was a kid. And um, I one day I was staring at a mandala and I said, oh, that would be cool to put that on a parasol. And then I realized because of the ribs that are on the edges, I could use the frame as a spirograph. And so I started making these very mathematical paintings mm. on it. Um, they are for me the basis of a mandala. Um, the mandala is meant to trigger your um, a spiritual connection, deepen your mind, and further for me, furthering my mission to help people elevate their mindset. That's beautiful. Thank you. So I want to ask a bit, um, you know, when I get mine, what's the best way to care for my parasol? Um, for the parasol, it's really simple. Um, just a little bit of a tiny bit of soap and water, um, uh, a soft brush or a, a light paper towel and just uh, uh, dampen it um, just a little bit. Um, they do dry. If, like, if they get soaked, um, they're just the paper is just going to crinkle um, once they're dry, but it's not going to break. Um, however, I do spray everything with a um, waterproof uh, solution simply to aid with uh, issues of dirt um, and how to uh, maintain the, to how to care for them. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a little bit of thing. Um, also, they're, they're wax prints, so they do have some waterproofing to them. Um, and then the, uh, the umbrellas are definitely waterproofed in a, in a silicone solution. So, oh, great. But yeah, um, taking care of them is really simple. If they get wet, just dry them. Keep them open like you would a regular umbrella to dry them. And uh, yeah, it's really simple. Yeah, and also some, I mean, everything some, comes with, with a care card, so that's <laughs> not an issue. Fabulous. And you know, the other thing that I thought was really interesting was I read that it's actually a couple degrees cooler under your umbrellas too. So yes. in that summer heat, you know, we're protecting our skin, but then also um, just the comfort. So is it the fabric that helps with with keeping it cooler in the shade? Is that? It's the two layers of the paper and the uh, fabric. Um, and that came with a lot of research as well. Uh, and it's, and it's extremely simple. Um, no, no major science. Just like, oh yeah, shade, <laughs> right next together. You do layers, um, and then you block the sun. Uh, yeah, the, the fact that the paper is, um, is really solid. And then the fabric on top of that is what makes it cooler and 100% UV protective. Um, since Crown Inspired is not just about elevating your mind, but protecting your crown, um, I, they had, and functional, they had to provide that kind of uh, purpose, that kind of functionality in order to, for me, make them not more than just pretty. Yes, back to that, the functional art piece. <laughs> Um, and, you know, and so just, you know, we're getting ready to wrap up here, but I want to just ask you, so I'm seeing all these beautiful colors and different patterns around you. How often, you know, for people that are visiting to make a purchase, are you constantly switching out what fabrics you're using? So there, so there's like very, if someone loves something, they should, they should get an on there and purchase right away. Um, I, I do very limited supplies, um, simply because there's so many prints, <laughs> there's so, like, it would be a travesty just to do one print for an entire season, um, simply because of the availability. When I do my own prints, maybe that'll be a little longer, and that's happening late 22, uh, 23, um, and that will be something, that, that's another thing that I'm really excited about. Um, but right now, I'm, my purpose is to showcase what we already understand as individual elements and bring them together in order to elevate the mindset to say, oh, collaboration is a major change and it does something and it, it changes your mind and um, you have new ideas 
with uh, when you collaborate um, with other people, with other mm -hmm. um, uh, perspectives. Um, yeah, so I do uh, uh, six to 12 um, per print. Um, and it really does depend on how quickly the print goes. Um, and I'll switch it up to do something else. But yeah, over, over my season, spring to early fall, I will do 25 prints. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, uh, That's yeah, I switch, it up. I switch it up. So always worth checking back in with Crown Inspired <laughs> and with you. So I just wanna thank you so much for your time today. And, um, and I want to tell the audience to see more of Tamara Belinda's work and Crown Inspired, please go to the Craft Show website at www.pmacraftshow.org and look for her in the list of 2021 artists. Thank you for watching. Thank you.